Hi, my name is John. I'm the lead pastor at Grace Life. Welcome to another sermon summary. We've been going through the book of Galatians, and today we covered the first 15 verses of Galatians 5. And a question comes up in this passage between the law and love. And here's a question. How do you love somebody without fixing them? Have you ever had someone around you, maybe in your life, and they, they claim to love you, but you just kind of sense that with that love comes a big list of expectations? And, and you can see that really quickly, right? Children are pretty good at spotting fake love. You know, they, they, um, they can see that. And so in this passage, Paul has been going through the, the inadequacy of the law and supremacy of grace, his gospel of grace. And so he continues to try to show these Galatians, these people from Galatia, that their reliance on the law is misplaced and it's catastrophic. So the, the, the Pharisees, loved the law, they lived for the law. It, it governed their, uh, the respect of the synagogue in their city, it, re, it governed their income, it governed everything about their lives in a way that, that uh, our religious experience in our culture doesn't, and so it was, it was a big deal for them. So when Paul says in, in Romans 10, he says this, Romans 10, 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So in other words, if you believe in Christ, you're done with the law. It, it, it's the end. It's the end in terms of, of the goal. The whole law points to Jesus. And it's the end sort of in terms of a timeline that you're done with the law because it has introduced you to Christ. And that's, that's the purpose of the law. Remember I said before, the law is like a mirror. It reflects your condition, but it doesn't fix your condition. It was never meant to fix the condition of sin. It just exposes sin, it stirs up sin, it magnifies sin. And we look at the law, it's impossible. In fact, in uh, Acts, Ch Acts chapter 15, um, uh, it says to the Pharisees, why do you place a burden of the law, a, a burden that, that our fathers and we have never been able to, to meet? And so they know doing the law is impossible, but that's just where they've been, okay? So here's another question. If, if Paul going through this, this uh, book of Galatians, if he's removing the law, the logical question is like, well then, how do I live? I mean, if I don't have the law as, as guardrails, how do I live? And he answers that in Galatians 5, verse 13. Check it out. Actually, it's Galatians 5, 5. Through the Spirit, we wait eagerly for righteousness. So there's a sense that the righteousness that Jesus is going to provide us in the future, we have to wait for in faith, okay? We're already um, positionally righteous through his sacrifice now, but there's a sense that we're waiting for that too. So, and then he continues at, after that. He says, verse 13, you were called to freedom, brothers. Calls them brothers again. They're very confused, but they're still brothers. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but rather through love serve one another. So that is interesting. Basically, Paul is saying, hey, you guys are all excited about doing the law. How about this? How about you fulfill the law and love each other? Oh, wait, you can't do that? Why? Because you're in the law and the law condemns. The law is designed to condemn. So Paul is sort of teasing them. You should be loving one another, but you can't because you're being condemned by the law. Well, how do you get out of that condemnation? You need to embrace the grace gospel of Jesus that I'm talking about. Of course, they can't do that. Why? Because to the Jew, to, to embrace Jesus is to renounce everything they know about their heritage. But it also, for the Jew, it would be to lower their standards of righteousness. Because they look at Jesus, he was hung on a tree. That means, you know, Deuteronomy, anyone who's hung on a tree is cursed. So, so he's impure, he's unknown, he's unclean, he's not what they expect. So, so for the Pharisees to believe Paul's gospel of grace, they're going to have to lower their standards in their minds, okay? Same is true about Gentiles. For the Gentiles to be accepted by these Jews in Galatia, these are Shammai Jews, very strict Jews, they would be needing to, according to their understanding, lower their standards and compromise to allow these Gentiles to come into the family of faith. And so it's interesting how both of them had similar problems. Paul goes on here and he says, verse 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. Now let's just stop there. The whole law is fulfilled in one word. What one word do you think the Pharisees would offer up? I'm probably guessing the Pharisees would say, well, the law is fulfilled in the one word, obey, because you got to obey. But what does the text here says? Paul says the whole law is fulfilled in one word, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love. This is a diametrically opposed, different view between the Pharisaical obey and the gospel of grace, love, right? And it all goes back to the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant kills, it separates, it condemns, and the New Covenant of grace in Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, gives life and gives us a new heart. And out of that new heart comes the ability to love, right? Then there's a caution here. Look at this. Last verse, verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I might offend some of you, and, and um, that's okay. Um, the Chosen is a big deal. It's coming out soon here, season three, and the trailer's out. And in this trailer, the Pharisee and Jesus are talking, and the Pharisee confronts Jesus. Uh, which is not a surprise, he's always doing that, but the dialogue has triggered a reaction in our culture that reminds me of this verse. But if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you're not consumed, okay? So the dialogue is this, the Pharisee comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, if you do not renounce your teaching, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. And Jesus replies, I am the law of Moses. And you get that point because all of Galatians, he's saying he came to fulfill the law. He's the end of the law. He's the point of the law. Everything in the Old Testament, Levitical, sac, it all points to Jesus. Well, some people look at this and they bite and devour one another. They go to Facebook, they go to social media, and they're like, oh, this sounds like the Book of Mormon, or oh, this, or the Chosen is heretical. Now, I have nothing invested in the Chosen, okay? But, but, but just let's watch what we freak out about and start to attack, right? Um, what would love, how would love respond to that? If you have a legitimate concern, love would be contacting the producers and expressing your concern, right? That's just an idea. So that aside, do you feel loved without a list? The law will give you a list and it's impossible to follow through. Jesus, the gospel of grace, gives you love and he has already satisfied the list and so his sacrifice is superior. So I hope that makes a difference to you. Um, Christ has freed us from the law, so we are free to serve other people. And that's what the law cannot do. See you next time. Thanks.